Welcome. Uh, my name is Ronald Honyute. I'm Hopi from Northern Arizona on the Hopi Reservation, village of Odwella. I do Katina dolls. Katina dolls are, well, there's really about three different versions, I guess, of a Katina. The Katina is a spirit that lives in the Grand San Francisco Peaks in Flagstaff, which is a real, that's where their home is. Their spirits are messengers to where everything, the rain, the earth, and everything. And then there's a second part of that is the actual Katina figures, the physical figures that come into the village and dance that represent the spirit. They're the messengers between us to the spirit. So they have a different cycle. The cycle starts around, actually right around Christmas time is when the a group of Katinas come to open up the kivas, so the season will start, and after that they'll start having dances, night dances, and they'll go on till the winter solstice, when the, which is Puamuya, which is our new year cleansing. Puamuya means cleansing, and then you know they'll maybe have a couple more night dances after that, and then it will quiet down for a while. Then during the summer they'll have dances in the plaza, actual plaza. So they'll have, you know, maybe one or two in each village. And, you know, depends on if there's somebody sponsoring one, they'll have it. But if not, you know, there's other, there's different villages that have one almost every weekend through the summer till the, um, around August, end of July. It's when the winter, summer solstice starts and they have their home dance. That's when all the kachinas physical katinas go back to their home in the San Francisco peaks. That's the, that's the physical portion of them. And then the, then this, you have the carving that represent all the katinas that, you know, that come, actually come. And that's where I come in with these. The way it starts is, um, these are called katina dolls because it's basically what they were are dolls. They were given to the little girl at birth, and depending on when, what time of the year, if it's before the winter solstice, they'll get it at winter. If they're born after the winter, so they'll get it at the summer. But this is the first piece, first doll, similar to this that they get. And I'm willing to pass these around if you want to look at them closer. Oh, they're just a flat piece, flat piece of wood, and it's usually painted with, um, natural pigments like this well back then they were but uh so i tried to have my son make a set for this presentation but of course he didn't come through so they're all cottonwood but uh this one is painted with um acrylic uh, oils and then i made the feather i didn't put a because they usually have an eagle feather on there but this is the first doll it's um it's a learning thing so it's all flat and then uh you know about six months later they'll get this one Oh, this one is called a hahai. It's the grandmother of all the kachinas. The kachinas come, they have a gourd and a corn ear, a perfect ear of corn, and they use that to name the babies. The grandmother will name the babies. The, the paternal side of the family will name the baby. And this is the hanoma. This is the second one they, that they get. It's got a little more relief to the face and the hand and a little more elaborate. So this would be the second one that they would get. And then after that, the third one, which would be a year and a half later, would be this one, which is even more elaborate. Got the headdress and more detail to it. So this is the first three that all the little girls will get the year and a half that they're here. Then after that, they'll start getting full figure pieces like something like this. This is one that my son made and this is a um, more of the traditional style, the old style, which is a big, they have a big comeback with that now. And they put the real feathers on there, you know, feathers that are from like doves and nothing, no, um, like no eagle feathers or anything like that, or something like this without the base. This is something that my dad made probably about in the 70s. And he came back to me from a collection, so it's one of a treasured piece that I have. But that's the that's the, the uh, third 
ball that they would get. And the reason they're called balls are because they were doll they are dolls. And most of the kids, you know, they play with it and they'll go straight to the mouth. So if they're painted with these pigments, you know, they'll have white you know, like the, it's it's natural clays and stuff, so they'll have that on. Same with the rattles. The little boys get rattles, bows and arrows, and the, the uh, rattles are painted with the same thing. So they, of course they're going to go to their mouths, and they would all. We all grew up like that. And they were given to us, and we would play with them. Yeah, um, the bows and arrows especially, and the girls they get these until they reach maybe 12, 13, used to be 13, 14, but now everything's getting younger and younger. When they get initiated into the katina and they're be able to participate and help their families with the ceremonies and stuff, that's as far as they'll go with the, getting these. And um, until they get married, and when they get married, they dress them in robes and all that stuff. And at the last dance of the season, at the home dance, they'll bring the bride out to show their uh, robes and the, everything that they got. And they'll get this again, the hahaye mana wuti. So uh, that just completes the whole cycle. I started doing this, I didn't realize that, but I've been doing this for about 56 years. I'm not as old as I look. My brother and I kind of picked it up from watching my dad. He did these ever since I can remember this style and about that size. All he did really was a farmer. I mean, he worked all over the Southwest as a um, construction worker. But when he came back home, settled out with my mom. And my mom's story is another interesting story. I'll get into that a little later, but anyway. He would hurt sheep, and all he'd have was a little denim bag. And end of the day, we'll go in there and look and see what he did. As the sheep were resting, he'd be sitting there, you know, with his razor-sharp pocket knife, and just blow. He's a really patient guy. We'd see the progress of the uh, carving in the evening when he came home. But he never really made it for commercially. It was for ceremonial purposes, and that's what these were originally for. So we would watch him, and we couldn't do anything with it until we were initiated into the Katina ceremony, which would be around 13 years old. And as soon as we hit that, we usually pick up a piece of wood and start whittling. My older brother, Brian, we started carving, and then he went off to school. And when he was there, that's when he started really getting into it. Then this, was, this would be in the 60s. You know, the arms would be pieced on right here. The ears, everything would be pieced on, even parts of the leg. Everything would be just all put together, glued together with a little toothpick or something to hold it in. And then he started carving out of one block of wood. And then at the same time, I started, started doing that. And then we would kind of go back and forth with that, getting ideas from each other. So in, we're in like, a dozen publications and me and my brother are accredited with starting this style of carving the one piece out of one block of wood and this is the wood that it's carved from you can run your fingernail through it and it you can you know it's it's pretty easy to work with and um that's where it starts from and then it goes to this stage where you can see a little form field kind of looks like a uh, what do you call that, the ultrasound? It's gonna be a little uh, racer that, it's called a uh, victim where he uh, has a uh, soot and grease in his hand. He'll spit into it and chase, challenge guys to run after them. So he's usually like this, spitting in his hand, going like that. And see that stage, and then he goes on to a little more, you know, finish. Well, and then I just need to cut out like maybe the feathers and the fingers. We started that piece and then we started doing the basis on the actual carved part of the blo uh, block of wood. And then I started painting on mine. And then he saw that, so he started doing it. And then I started carving, actually carving on it, little car relief carving. And then almost by accident one day, I was carving out the base like that. And I went through, 
all the way through. So I just kept at it. And um, so this one is hollowed up to here. And you can see through it. And if you want to handle this very gently, you can, or you can come look at it later. And, you know, it's fragile and it's like $7,500. So, you know, you might, might want to break it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, I started doing that. So as far as I know, I'm the first one that started doing that. It's, it's hollowed out here and then I'll close it back in on some of them. And um, like this one, I left it open and then, it, then I started carving in here also. So that's something that I haven't seen anybody else do. But slowly and slowly, I'm seeing at different shows that people are carving the base. That's pretty common now, not too much, but you know, I've been doing that for 15 years. And now that I'm hollowing the base out, I haven't seen too many other than my two sons that do it. Okay, what I use is basically, this is my favorite tool, is an X-Acto knife, number 11 blade. And it does what I, I want, and then if I need bigger pieces, then I'll use these these nice Japanese knives that are can get really, really sharp, razor sharp. And then they eat like these. And uh and then I'll do that, then I'll sand it down like that piece out there that's almost finished. Yeah. Uh, I'll start cutting in the details and then I'll finish it off, sand it all down. And then I use this really fine tip wood burner. It's adjustable, so you can, I have it on the lowest setting just so it'll make a little line and it, it's like tedious process. Like this one here, all the feathers on here you don't have you can see it when you come look at it later or I can hold it around it. It's um everything every surface on this piece probably has a little of that line. So it's a real, really long process. Something like that will take me about two and a half, three months to finish. And that's fast. Because I've had some my my me and my sons worked on a piece all together that took us twelve years to finish. And we finally finished it last year. It's a big piece with different, our different interpretations of the, you know, our styles of it. It's basically the same, but each of my sons have a different, really, my older son, he's got, he's got my brother's imagination, so he'll do all kinds of things on it. And my son, a younger son, he's been doing these traditional styles, so we have that on the carving, and then he'll do the contemporary ones also therapy for me and I really really respect what I'm doing and I have to my mind has to be there my heart has to be in it or it things just won't work it's just it's like a real spiritual thing so um I've been doing this show for a while and you know they asked me to do this again and I said I'm happy to come and share what I what I know, I don't really get real deep into the religious meaning and significance of things. I'll mostly talk about my the work that I do, that I put in it, and I can't really teach people how to do it. I've had a couple, I used to do a couple of classes for a couple of summers, you know, mentoring young adult, young boys to do this, and every single one of them picked it up so fast. I mean, I didn't have to really, I, mean, I told them how I did it. That's all I can tell you. I told them, this is how I do it. You might have your own way. My way is slow. It's hard, but that's what Hopi is. Hopi means peaceful and everything we do is supposed to be humble and, you know, just be humble about everything. That's, so that's how I look at this. And I really, um, respect what I do and um, this one I um, finished about a year a little over a year ago this is actually the longest time I've had a piece because they're usually gone so this thing's been at several shows we got a best of show at a, that was all nothing but Hopi Carver show at the Herd Museum this got the best of show there and um, 
took a, like a second place at Gallup Ceremonial and another show and then took second place here this year. And this is the newest thing I've done. If we, I was still painting on the Friday before I entered it here I'm in the room. <laughs> so that's the latest thing I've done. And I've been on that for ever since Santa Fe Indian Market, which was in August, strictly working on that. And then did a couple of small things, which I also do like little pendants like that. But it's basically the same thing, but they're pendants and um, a bolo. And these are really, really popular. And then when I'm not in the right state of mind to be working on these, I'll do um, earrings out of conwood root with inlaid with turquoise stones and real old style like mosaic. Uh, Mesa Verde type stuff. So I do that, but I just didn't have time for this show because I was so much into that one. And like I said, I was still finishing painting up, touching it up on Friday morning before I entered into the judging. So, you know, that's that's as far as this goes. And then, you know, this is... Lately, I mean, they've been doing these old style ones and they'll find a piece of wood like this and have like broken, you know, the roots aren't all there but um i thought i would be painting on this to just show what i do but what i use is i use oil paint because i like to keep you can see the grain of the wood in it because you can get it so thin and that's what another thing that me and my brother were known for is how we painted it we wanted to keep the you know really subtle so back then they used to use poster paint they would use acrylics and really bright and then you know the arms would be really exaggerated you know real act they call them action dolls but ours since they're out of one piece you can't really make it like that unless you have like a like i said a dremel tool where you can cut away pieces like that easily i mean you can whip one out in a day or so if you have that tool and some people are good at that and I give them you know props for that but it's just not my style I just do whatever it takes slowly to finish up what I did <laughs>